Big boss. How you doing, man? Y'all good? Me yeah, me yeah, me yeah, me yeah, me yeah. It's Eli. What's, what's going on? It's a, it's a strange time we're in right now, but um, since we last spoke, there's been a lot of changes here, huh? Yeah, we spoke in September, and since then, a lot has taken place. We talk about business, COVID, tourism, Antigua. What's the update? Well, I mean, it's very unfortunate that uh, that the sort of logical progression and prediction has come true here in Antigua and Barbuda. This crisis, um, unfortunately, has just followed the same kind of steps that many places around the world that has a lot of international travel um, has, has followed. And so, unfortunately, you know, we started getting COVID fatigue here in Antigua. People started to lose concentration, allowed some of the protocols that were set in place uh, in the beginning of June when we opened tourism and open international flights, uh, they, 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 they drop their, 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 their protections, drop their guard, you know? Um, and, uh, while we were seeing England go into strong lockdowns and of course, so much propaganda in the States and the British are like, yeah, we're going to go into lockdowns. Let's get out of here. We had, a, we had a lot of travelers coming here. And I think for COVID-19, it's good to call them travelers because that is the that is the way that that the disease sort of spreads and and, and takes takes uh, takes off. So huge amount of people coming here in December and January, and and there were unfortunately we didn't have because of the COVID fatigue and because the government kind of like dropped their guard. We had a situation where a lot of businesses who were given protocols in order to operate, the, the instructions were not clear enough with regard to how many people could be in a particular business, for example, a restaurant. So the restaurant had to have, you know, hand washing, sanitizing stations all over the place, and you had to spread the tables out. But they didn't tell them, this restaurant and this building cannot possibly have more than 40 people. They didn't, they didn't put that on the wall. They didn't put that on the front door. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you have restaurants doing the smart thing, separating the tables. But if you wanted to come in for a drink, you weren't allowed to stand up at the bar, but you could come in and hang out in the middle of the restaurant. And you had situations where lots of bars and restaurants were just full of people. And, uh, you know, every, every, every other house was having house parties, big Christmas dinners and, you know, there were some New Year's celebrations in, in, in this restaurant and that restaurant. And, you know, you go to Epicurean supermarket or, or, you know, any of these supermarkets here and you see people with the mask around the nose. Um, you know, you had people with handkerchiefs as masks. Um, and overall, it was like, yo, this, this climate is warm. It's breezy. We're not going to get it here. You know, um, everywhere else, you know, they've, they've, they, they don't know what they're doing or they've got bad clients, uh, climate or... You know, and so we were just sort of fooling ourselves. It was a very, you know, it's an inconvenient truth that COVID doesn't really care about all that. So we just didn't want to hear that truth. And um, as a result, we are seeing a huge, terrible spike in transmissions, in hospitalizations, and unfortunately in deaths. And, you know, for a little tiny country like Antigua, it's it's very sad because these deaths will touch most communities and of course the deaths unfortunately are just getting started because deaths usually follow a big spike in hospitalizations and our hospitalizations are and trend, and, and infections are are still on the up so while they're still on the up the deaths unfortunately slowly follow those and while the world has made all kinds of discoveries and, 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 and have learned techniques and how to keep people alive who, you know, a year ago probably would have died if they had had COVID, you know, we have such limited resources here in Antigua and Barbuda that, you know, uh, we can't buy the drugs fast enough. We can't get the new machines here fast enough. And the worst thing, worse than all of that, according to the people who are at the top of the hospital here in Antigua and Barbuda, is that we just don't have the, the personnel. We don't have the staff. 
Yeah, let and... me stop you there. Let me stop you there. That was, yeah. that was, you're leading into my next question. So that's why I want to stop you. You're talking about, you know, the, you know, the profession said we don't have the staff. Let's talk about how much staff you need for, say, one COVID patient. It takes a huge amount of resources. I mean, we listened to Joey John talk about that, uh, Dr. Joey John talk about that, and also Jason Belazir talk about it. And they didn't give numbers. But what they're saying is, of all of our staff, it's hard for us to treat more than seven people on a ventilator. Um, and what Joey John said is, if you look at 300 new active cases who have COVID-19, you know statistically that a certain portion of them is going to need to be ventilated or at least going to need really urgent, serious care. And he says, we just simply can't handle much more than that. They say that 80% of the people who go on a ventilator don't make it. I want to ask you a question. Why did the nurses have to basically put a gun to the government's head to like get what they deserve? You know, why does, why, 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 Eli? Why the nurses got to be, well, you know, holding, gasping, yeah. you know, against the throat for them to get taken care of, bro? Well, you know, I don't have all the, I, of course, I don't have all the answers. And I, and I definitely don't know enough about, about that. What I do know is that everybody is always talking about budgetary constraints. In, in other words, government keeps on saying, yo, we can't afford this. We can't afford that. We can't afford that. We're going to try and pay for this. We're going to try and give you your, 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 your this or your that. You know, like it's always about like how tight the cash is. However, we live in a country that is, that people, there's a lot of truth that people would rather not talk about and would, not, would rather not examine. I spoke to a former minister on her. I, 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 I confronted her about this thing. And I said, listen, one of the reasons we don't have the budget for this is because you and all the other people who were ministers five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, in Antigua, if you win an election twice, you serve two terms, you get a salary for life. Now, they don't call it a salary. They call it a pension. But it's equivalent to your, your salary, give or take, which is big anyway, because, you know, the average Antigua is never going to make 15,000 or 10,000 EC a month. But can you imagine making that? I mean, I would love a journalist to do a mathematical investigation of how much money we have to spend every month, spend every month on former minister's pension. Who are already wealthy? Who's already wealthy? It's a lot of money, especially for a country that's borrowing money since April to pay civil servants. So, you know, how can you afford to, to buy all the nicest PPE or, 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 or medical equipment or, or pay nurses a fraction of what a minister gets? Or, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's hard. You, you don't have the money because you know that every month those ministers say, hey, listen, the law says you got to pay me. You got to pay me my pension. Yes, I haven't worked in 30 years for the government. I haven't signed any, any document for 30 years on behalf of the people of Antigua and Barbuda. But I deserve, because it's law, to keep on getting my 5,000 US a month or thereabouts um, a salary. Now, you know, the people here, the people, the constituents, the voters, the, the, the people of this country, need to understand that we are a poor country. I had somebody call me, want to get some money to buy food. They don't have food. They've been eating rice and ketchup for like weeks. You know what I mean? Like we have lots of people like that and you're going to get, you're going to feel good about taking that 5,000 US. Call, call it 4,000, 10,000 EC every month. So these guys have all kinds of assets and other tools which are legally allowed to enrich these guys. And they know that nurses or whoever else not getting paid enough, not getting equipment, but they're comfortable because it's the law, as the lady told me when I confronted her about why we're so broke. It's the law. So because of the law, we're not going to do anything about it. It's the law. You can't tell me I can't get my, my salary. It's, it's a nonsense. It's a crazy thing. It's crazy. They don't care. Eli, the bottom line is they don't care. We could, they don't care. The politicians, it's, 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 it's obvious. They, they haven't cared about Antigua for the last 30 years. I want to talk about Hodges Bay. Oh, God. Uh, who's marking Hodges Bay? Who's marking Hodges Bay? What happened at Hodges Bay, Eli? 
Well, I mean, I, I, it, it, it kind of turns me off. Um, so to be honest, I don't know enough about, about it. Again, I just know a little. So what I will say is that Hodges Bay has a very interesting marketing concept and they, I don't understand it. I don't understand how, the, how it adds up. Uh, but because it does, it does not add up. I, you know, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. Eli, well, this is a guy. Know, but, this, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I you know, I don't want to. I don't want to listen, Brian. I don't want to get too Eli, much Eli, into Eli, it. Eli, Eli, it's okay. It's okay. Let me say it, Eli. This, this video, everybody's seen this on social media. There's a guy breathing fire, limbering on the beaches of ha on Hodges Bay for a group of tourists, and there's a young lady getting a, um a ticket from a cop from a police on her gallery because she doesn't have on a mask. You can't curse the poor people and say, hey, yeah. hey, hey, community spread, community spread, and this thing is going off from Hodges Bay, and there's fireworks going off at Jumbi Bay. Yeah. I think that we've talked about how a poor country like Antigua needs the, the financial resources in order to pay nurses. Now, that's just, that, let's just use that as an example. We can't pay nurses or the people who work at our power station, or you know the people who work at the port, we can't pay these guys without some kind of economic engine running. Our economic engine, unfortunately, is the majority tourism. So if we decide we're gonna lock down tourism, which a lot of people are calling for, then we're, how do we pay these people? How do we buy PPE? How do we buy the, the needles to vaccinate our people? But the thing is, back to Hodges Bay, I believe hotels and tourism businesses should be allowed to operate we have to have enough brains in this country that we can find the only real economic engine that we have at the moment the only option tourism and do it in a safe manner that we don't endanger the industry tourism and the people of this country it can be done and there are hotels in Antigua that are doing a very good job. If Name them. Who? Who? People, who? Name them. Name them. If, who? If you see, if you see photos and video and first-hand reports coming out of Galley Bay Hotel, you will see the polar opposite of what you're seeing online coming from Hodges Bay. When people are home locked up after 8 p.m. because of curfew, and you're partying like it's 1999, that will enrage people it starts and at the top when, right it starts at the top Eli, it starts at the top when well you know i don't know there seems to be we can talk about that brian but i feel like there's some funny stuff going on in our government right now and i am not a politician in fact no politician calls me and talks to me about what's going on in NT. i have no inside information i have no nobody telling me, well, this a politician is doing this and this minister, I don't know. But from the outsider looking in, some things don't add up. Some things don't add up. And you say it starts from the top. Well, I feel like the top is saying, look, my job is this. His job is tourism. His job is the Ministry of Health. His job is, 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 is information. And it's very easy for our prime minister to delegate health to the Minister of Health, tourism to the Minister of Tourism. And that way, you know, he can say, look, this guy is, is more educated, more knowledgeable about health than me. If he calls for lockdown, we'll have a lockdown. I'm not going to make the decision. So it's almost like passing the buck. See, um, that's the problem. And, that's the problem. And he needs to get that because it stops with him, bro. It stops with him. Well, He's world boss. You know, he calls um, himself the world boss, so he should act like it. You know, um, I don't know, bro. It, know, it, I'm, I'm feeling the streets. It's tense. I'm feeling the tenseness out there. There's a lot of tenseness and there's a lot of friction. We had an incident at Hodges Bay where, you know, Jay Truth, he went there not only to highlight this divide, but also to get more people talking about it and more people enraged about it. And I think that's been very successful. And unfortunately, a absence of clutch. You know, leadership? Clutch. Leadership? No, no, no. No, no, no. I, I, what I'm seeing is 
like them using the race card mm -hmm. to 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 enrage young Antigans and older Antigans further. And this for me, as a white Antiguan who grew up in this country, went to kindergarten here all the way through school, I don't think that this is going to help our country. But, you know, there are places with much worse divisions than Antigua. And what I see here is that they're using the racial argument to, to describe what's happening at Harders Bay and or Jimby Bay or anywhere else. And, 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 you know, back in May, when I was invited to be part of the Tourism Reopening Task Force, I said to the committee there, there's, I don't know, 12 or 14, I can't remember how many people were there. I said to them, I said to them, listen, guys, if you're telling me that we are going to allow tourists to go wherever they want and do whatever they want, whatever they want, this is going to create a big, big problem in this country because there's going to be an impression that those tourists brought COVID into our communities. It's like and, what it's, what's like, it's like what's happening with the um, Asians. Like we see a, now, like a lot of violence towards the Asians because so, you know somebody was called you know the Asian flu and all that stuff. It's coming down. Correct. It's coming down the and pipeline. Them, we are seeing right now an us versus them mentality going on here, and 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 I think this is so detrimental to our society. As far as you're talking about the us versus them, and I don't think it's a race thing. I think it's a the haves and the have not. I think, you know, the privilege it's, is really, Brian, really, really a stirred up. I think that's more Brian, what I'm sensing. It's, 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 it's there. It's that. It's that. And it's more. We need to be very humble and very respons socially responsible to the people of this country to show them, listen, we need economics. And with a vacuum of, of good leadership, when it comes to tourism, good leadership when it comes to health. You know, we see, unfortunately, huge issues. And I want to get to the 6 p.m. curfew. Because to me, this 6 p.m. curfew seems to cause in folks, you know, more anxiety and stress than anything. Personally, I don't think it's a good idea. Me, personally, I don't have all the information, right? Because that's another thing. The government's not sharing enough information with us. But, you know, like, this curfew, I went to Epicurean the other day. And I had never seen it so busy since since they reopened the the the, the, the curfew to go. You remember when they had a hard lockdown? So like yeah, the, at the beginning, like, at the beginning, at the beginning. Yeah, I haven't seen it as busy since then. And you know, you 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 shorten the times. Like the banks are closing at twelve or whatever. Some some rashishness like that. That's a you whole that, shift gone. That's a whole yeah, that's a whole shift gone. You concentrate a lot more people into the, into the into the supermarkets, and I think that it's very dangerous. There's more that the uh, people who run this country can do. The defense force, the the police, um, you know, there's more that can be done to try and stop the spread without stopping us from going to the supermarkets. And I think even restaurants, you know, like I think restaurants, if they are managed should be allowed to open up until nine o'clock. People should be able to go to restaurants and sit down in a very, very controlled manner. So how can you tell the people of this country, yeah, you know what? Y'all can open up until nine. We can keep the restaurants open until nine. You can open the supermarkets until, until 10 or whatever else, you know, but um, we're gonna be there working after hours to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Nobody wants to work here, you know what I mean? So like, hey, easier to just tell people you can't go to the beach on a public holiday. And to go and patrol the beaches. They were like, oh, we can't control, we can't patrol so many beaches. Well, that's fine. Just patr patrol Jabba Walk, Friars Beach, Dickinson Bay, uh, Long Bay, you know, Long Bay. Bay. Exactly, ten beaches, and you and you have controlled big partying on beaches. You know what I mean? It's just about thinking outside the box, or just just thinking in general and working. There's not enough thinking and working going on in this country. I mean, when we had the task force, believe it or not, we had one month to go before we we're going to open up our borders. And in the first meeting I attended, they're like, okay, so it's, uh, it's Tuesday now. And um, uh, when can we meet? When can, can we meet on Monday? And I was like, you, uh, I stopped them. I said, hold on there, hold on there, hold on there. Y'all are going to wait a week to, to have another meeting about how we're going to reopen tourism? We've basically had, to be honest with you, about a year to prepare for this moment. And we didn't do much, Regin. We didn't do much. 
We've basically had yeah. one year and not much has happened. Eli. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's real sad. It's a drug that's been out for about 30 years. It's a repurposed uh -huh. drug. And doctors saying this could probably help us out, help us get out of this mess. It's called ivermectin. Yeah. Is, you've heard of ivermectin? Yep. I spent about the last three, four days reading about ivermectin. And there's a lot of doctors who are thinking there might be something here. What do you know about it? Um, very little, but there, there, it's not just that. There's a few, there's a few drugs and that's one of them that, that they've had great results with that whatever these drugs are, because the world is in crisis, little places like Antigua and Barbuda, we at last, we get last pick. Yeah, but I like this one. I like this one particular because this seems to be like an alternative to the Moderna, the AstraZeneca, the, um, the Pfizer. This, this has been... You know, countries around the world, like from Paraguay to Peru, Bulgaria, Dominican Republic, and they've done studies in Spain, Who, because it's been on the market for 30 years. It's like, you know, from what I picked up, it's already FDA approved, and it's worked. The numbers, they've done studies on it. They, they, you know, the data is there. Yeah. They, you know, they have, like, yeah. papers that they said they use it, I guess, um, SARS, and they yeah. feel like this, this could be it, especially, you know, for, like, countries like Antigua. Yeah. You talk about, um, you talk about misinformation. Antigua and Barbuda, we know how misinformation spread, like 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 via wow. Facebook, and that's a war in itself. Talk about misinformation, and as the youth are saying in Antigua, like you know, them say that they don't want the vaccine. They, they you know, there's a you know, you know, we have to worry about that. Yeah. I I told Marvin Joseph on a conversation I had with him back in November. I I warned him about this. He didn't think it was such a big problem at the time. Of course, now he's seeing there's a big problem. Unfortunately, that's months and months of 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 wasted time that we could teaching people about vaccines and about how vaccines work and about why this vaccine was so quick to be developed and 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 all the all the normal stumbling block blocks that exist for for other vaccines that were just pushed out of the way. You know, we we could have done that. We haven't done that until now. The other thing is that about, about COVID-19 that everybody, you know, I find the, the smart people in the world, they're able to say, you know what? We made a mistake here. I thought this was the right way to go. And we made a mistake. There's a better way to go. You know, that is something missing, I believe, from our society these days. It's like somebody makes a mistake and he's focused. Oh, they made a mistake. They can, they can never do anything right ever again because they made a mistake this one time. So we can't listen to anything they say. You know, like, yo, that's if the human race were like, was, was like that from the start. You know, we, 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 where would we be? Mistakes are good. Right listen, I've learned some of my best lessons in life from mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, you're not living and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. No, and I mean, but this think is the thing. COVID. This is the thing, Eli. Give me a second. This is the thing. In our society, Antigua, they just like to write people off, and everybody has to be perfect. And I think one of the most important yeah. things we need to get away from this idea that everybody has to be perfect. Everybody has to yeah. know how to spell everything. Everybody, everybody can know everything. And, funny, and this is this is this is that. this is misinformation, and, and and it gotta change. One it's funny you should say Eli, that. Eli, Eli, let me tell you something. Spelling. We're talking about. Give me one second. We're talking about doctors, Eli. I've spent the last 20 years working with doctors. One thing I learned about doctors, they can't forget writing. Some of them can't even spell. You can't spell in Antigua. Some guy, oh, you do, you. They write you off at 12. I went to All Saints Primary School. They don't write me out since I was 12, Reggie. So we got to change that. Yeah. There's a lot in our well, society. We got to change. You know, you, you, this is something that I saw. Now, the prime minister of this country, the person who is duly elected, who won the election, who's the, the boss of this country, essentially, because he got the most votes, right? He, he's saying, I believe, over, over, over the last few days, he's been saying some very pertinent, very sensible things on his, on his Facebook uh, wall. I wish he'd be saying them on, in a more official capacity, but nevertheless, he's saying them on his, on his Facebook wall. Right now, we're in crisis to do with COVID and the economy. And what he's saying about COVID and the economy, for the most part, recently has been quite sensible. You're right. 
he should be forcing his minister of, of health and his minister of tourism to, to follow his lead, I think, in, in, in some things. It's not happening for whatever reason, I don't know. I don't understand the politics really. But the opposition takes a screenshot of some of the things, some of the sensible things he says and ridicules it because he makes a spelling mistake about herd immunity. Now, what he said is being said by all epidemiologists around the world, all the, the sensible countries that are, that are making progress, he said the same thing. But because he spelled the word herd wrong, as in herd immunity, they're tearing the message apart. So if we're gonna to continue to fight each other because he made a spelling mistake, or because he didn't, he made a mistake last year and he should have done this and should have done that. No, 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 no. Listen, deal in the in the in the current time. If I was UBP, I would say to Gaston Brown, say, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do everything we can to tear you down, to, to make sure that you never serve in this government ever again. We're gonna do that when we get out of this crisis. We agree to do this. We agree we will not do this. And let's fight this war together. And then afterwards, we rip up the document and we start pelting conch shells at each other again. That would never happen. They're too petty. They, that would never happen. Speaking of mistake, do you think it was a mistake for Gaston Brown to drop the line or whatever you want to call it and get a vaccine from Hadid or whoever he got it from? It, without... was, the most, it was the most ridiculous, stupid move. I mean... It was Gaston Brown needs to do the sensible thing and have experts in public relations work for him, experts in health work for him, experts, experts, experts. Don't say anything until you get briefed. Don't do anything until you get briefed. That was a dumb, stupid political move. And unfortunately, we it helps create more chaos it was a ridiculous stupid bad move i will i will i will never say otherwise however it's it's it's, it's history it's done oh we got to go to now we got to go to the now we got to go to now we got to go to now it's, eli it's i want to spill the milk let it go like to, to, just to survive this well eli i want to wrap this up because this is becoming a lot of work for me yeah let me give it a final <laughs> word yeah, let me give it a final word bro Say what you want to say, who you want to say to, bro. I think that we have a lot of very wealthy people who love Antigua. I think they're watching what's going on. I think they can help. I think they have, some of them have been helping. You know, they're, they're people who were here over Christmas and New Year on their yachts who have tens of billions of dollars. They loved Antigua. They'll be back here again. And they need to help this little country. And I believe some of them are, but you know, it costs 250,000 US to put vaccines on a plane from India to Antigua. Treasury doesn't have that money. So we need help because if we don't get back on our feet, we will be a burden to America. We'll be a burden to England and Canada and, and our neighbors. Um, this is about fixing the world, helping the world get through this. Now countries like America, they have resources that we don't, you know, and we need help. We need to do better, and I think we can, but we need a, a, a unity, a unified effort, and we need help from outside. Eli, movement. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, we're we'll, going to we'll, link we'll up. We'll link up.